Well, I guess I think about heterogeneity in two senses. Um, one sense is just heterogeneity itself, the differences between people or the differences in their outcome. Another way I think about heterogeneity is heterogeneity of treatment effects. In other words, how differences among people result in different responses um, as a result of a given treatment. And I think that's the sense in which most people mean it usually. Because what they're trying to do is decide, should I treat someone or not treat them? Should I treat them with this or that approach? And so heterogeneity of treatment effect is, I think, really the critical idea. Well, there are a lot of different ways to examine heterogeneity. I think in practice, the way people often examine heterogeneity is they look for um, variables that define groups and then follow the idea that within those different treatment groups, um, there'll be different effects of um, different treatments. So the way I think about defining heterogeneity of treatment effects is really about those, one way is to study it within those groups. So that's one form of heterogeneity of treatment effects is differences within groups. Another form of heterogeneity in, in treatment effect, or another way to approach it, is to actually look at individuals and see whether given individuals respond differently to different treatments. And this is where you get into things like N of 1 trials, where you have a patient who's treated on one treatment and you switch them over and try them on the other treatment and see how they do. You can also look at heterogeneity of treatment effects in terms of modeling, simulations of what would happen in one treatment or another treatment. I think those are really the main approaches that people typically see. I think you decide on um, treatment, um, how do you're going to approach treatment heterogeneity both before and after you start research. So before, it's very helpful to start with a theory because it helps you narrow your set of hypotheses and do a little less data mining after the fact. On the other hand, sometimes once you've engaged in a study, you find differences, and then those differences in turn become the basis for future studies. So in a sense, you're always both sort of beginning with a theory and specifying the type of heterogeneity, heterogeneity that you're interested in when you start, and then also um, later on using the data that you get to study other types of heterogeneity. Well, certainly you're going to need large sample sizes if you're going to find it. There's no question about that. And the more different types of heterogeneity you consider, um, the, the more possibility there is that you're going to have false positives and that you're going to sort of identify associations when they're really not, not there. So you do best when you have a defined number of um, pre-specified hypotheses and you have a large sample size that allows you to um, test them. But in reality what often happens is that you then discover more things and it leads to more questions. There are a variety of pitfalls when you consider heterogeneity. One, one big problem is that if your sample size isn't large enough you'll have trouble identifying the effects that, that could be there and, and, and be important. Another pitfall is is that if you don't begin with a set of hypotheses and then you simply find associations in the data in an unframed way, a lot of them may be false positives. And the more hypotheses you consider, the more will be true just by chance. So you do best when you have a large sample size that makes it easy to identify the effects you're interested in and when to, and to, and when to the extent possible you pre-specify the hypotheses that you're looking for.